One thing parents and kids can always count on, right, is homework. Similar to what we're seeing in most college classrooms, though, there's this change now at the middle and high school level. The focus is becoming less about homework and more about finals and testing. And the goal is to replace what some are calling an outdated system for something termed equitable grading. Several school districts in Nevada, Iowa, Virginia, and California are adopting equitable grading. Proponents say this will help students who have challenges outside of the classroom. Critics say students can actually take advantage of the system. Joining me right now to talk about all of this, Joe Feldman, the founder and CEO of Crescendo Education Group. He has 20 years of education experience. And Laura Jean Pinrod, an English teacher for 17 years at Clark County School District in Nevada. Both of you uh, have had quite a bit of experience around kids. So, Laura Jean, I'm going to start with you. Originally, you were optimistic about this equitable grading system. What changed your mind? I think for me, something that changed my mind is I saw students starting to game the system and the students that this is supposed to benefit are the students that are not utilizing it. So I find that we have students that are in our BA range just trying to get to a higher level of an A. So that may be going from a 90 to a 95 or a 97 versus my students who really need to remediate work and probably need to retest and do things of that nature that are in that DEF range that are not utilizing the system that is built for them to help them with the equitable grading. You know, I found it, uh, there was an article one of my producers provided me and you uh, were quoted saying they're relying on children to have intrinsic motivation and that is the furthest thing from the truth for this age group. Uh, Joe, I know that you founded, you lead the Equitable Grading Project. I went on your website, I started reading up on uh, what you've done here. What do you say to that response? Kids gaming the system. I mean, we know that happens in a, in a household. Why would we not think it would happen in a classroom? Yeah, thank you. So, you know, one of the things that's the irony is that teachers um, get a lot of support with learning how to teach and uh, create effective classrooms, but teachers get almost no training in how to grade, ironically. And one of the things that I started researching when I left the classroom was to figure out, like, why do we have this grading system and found that most of the practices we continue to use are really the same as from 100 years ago, and we're just replicating that. And what we find when teachers start using more equitable grading practices, and that means practices that create more accuracy in grades and are more bias resistant and are more motivational, when they receive the support they need to implement these, they find that grade inflation goes down and students become actually more motivated. You know, students start school being very intrinsically motivated. You come into kindergarten classrooms, first grade classrooms, and they are just so excited to learn. No student is asking about their grades or points. Around middle school, we start building lots of extrinsic motivation supports, even though the research on adolescent development shows us that for effective teaching and learning, extrinsic motivation actually lowers performance in students, and we oh. can build intrinsic motivation. But Joe, I heard you say bias resistant, and that's a term that's used on your website. I think there are a lot of people who would say that then you're assuming that there's systemic oppression within the school system using the old ways, and that it's out with the old and with the new. Why does it have to be a win-lose scenario? Why aren't there, is there, why aren't there educational tenants that can be carried forth that are good? and that are not biased, in addition to actually just improving it through some of your methods. I agree. I mean, we actually believe homework can be really important for students and when st and students should do homework and they should get feedback for it. We just think that the problem is that homework shouldn't be included in the grade, um, that there's lots of other ways to motivate students. I mean, a perfect reason is that, you know, when uh, when we assign homework, we assign it so students get practice and that practice helps students do better on the performance on the quiz or the test. Well. How does it work in the real world? If I have a basketball game on Saturday, I go in the backyard and I shoot free throws for an hour. Nobody is looking to see how many free throws I make and then bringing it to the game and adding it to my score, right? It is very clear to me that I practice shooting those free throws because I need to practice in order to do well in the assessment. Same thing for homework, right? It should be assigned. Students should, teachers should collect it, give feedback. If students don't do it, there are consequences. But it's just that that performance shouldn't be included in the grade because when it is, it disproportionately punishes students who have more responsibilities outside of school or who have less support outside of school. Even if those students do very well on the assessment, and they don't turn in the homework, it ends up pulling down their grade, even though they know the material. So you there's know, lots of ways to blend what we know about good teaching and learning with these equitable practices. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.